Morning folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. Continuing on our fire school series today, I want to show you a little tip or trick that you can use to make your bow drill fires a little bit simpler and a little bit less work on you, and also give you a little bit more longevity of your set. And if you remember right, we talked about constructing a bow drill fire set in a prior video in this series, and we talked about the bearing block or the handhold being really the most difficult thing to reproduce and also has the least amount of longevity or durability in the set because you have that constant friction at the top. You can always move holes on your board, but that one hole in your bearing block is always the one you're gonna use. And it tends to shoulder out over time with the spindle because it wears away that wood in the block. And that's why we have gone to things like that arrowhead shaped device or the SE Rowan device that's actually a piece of metal that you use for a bearing block. And I want to show you a tip or trick that you can use in the woods to affect almost the same result very quickly and easily. Stay with me and we'll get started. What we really want to do is we want to figure out a way that we can avoid carrying an extra object or an extra piece of kit to make our handhold or bearing block. But we want something that's going to give us some longevity off the landscape. Now if we could find a piece of bone or antler or something like that, that would give us a great advantage. A piece of spinal column from a cow, a piece of deer antler, all of those things will work as well for bearing blocks and they can be used very easily, but your likelihood of finding things like that are a lot less likely than other things. So I've got a bearing block here that's just made out of a piece of hardwood maple and I have carved my divot in here with my knife. One thing that there's a lot of in the wild is trash. And pop cans are pretty prevalent, so is glass. For this example, I'm going to use a monster can. But all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut the bottom out of this can with my knife. Just like this. And this concave bottom part right here is a little bit heavier duty than the size of the can. And I want that for longevity. So I'm going to just take my knife, pierce that, and cut a square out of it. About a half inch square is going to be enough. So when I'm done, I have this square of aluminum material. And this aluminum is gonna become the metal part of my bearing block. So when I'm done, I'll lay this square of metal over the top of my divot there that I've created with my knife. And I'm gonna take a small punch that I've made out of a piece of tulip poplar and my baton and just pound it down into that drive it down into that hole. It doesn't have to be completely perfect in there. It's going to fold on you and things like that. Don't worry about that. Now you can see it's kind of flopping around a little bit in there but it's turned into more of a concave shape. And I want that buried in there pretty good. Now, you could use some type of adhesive to hold that in there, maybe some pine pitch or some pine resin. Just put some pine resin on the back side of that and stick it in there, but the heat's probably going to melt that. Once you put your spindle in this one time and spin it, 
it's going to heat that thing up and it's going to stay in there pretty good for you. And that will give you a little bit more longevity. The other thing you could do is you can fold these corners over a little bit, pull it out, fold those corners over just a little bit like this with your hands, put it back in there, and just reshape and resize it as you need to. to get it in there and that's going to stay in there pretty good now because those corners are catching inside the wood there now we're ready to utilize this thing remember that our spindle now and this is our spindle we've already used is going to ride in that metal and it's never going to shoulder out onto wood which is going to give this thing a really nice free float and make the spindle turn really really well in our board so let's get that ready and we'll take a look and see how that works. Okay, so we've got our board here. I'm gonna try to turn this thing around again for you guys so you can see kind of what's happening here, if I can. We'll use a spot that we've already used. I think we've still got enough left in there to get an ember out of it. We'll load our bow up here. And we'll talk about that bearing block. All right, now we've got our metal pounded in, our piece of our pop can. And as usual, the first thing we really want to do is we want to see and make sure that this thing's going to ride smooth. And you can hear that smooth motion. I'm not really putting any downward pressure on this right now. I just wanted to show you how smooth it was going to run. Now I'm going to apply a little pressure. As our notch fills up, we can speed up. And you can see the size of that humongous ember right there. Okay, so like I said, you know, you look at this bearing block, we still have the same piece of metal in there. It's no worse for wear. Our spindle, the pithy area of our spindle is wore down a little bit, but we've got a shine all the way around the outside of it where it was touching that aluminum. There's no shouldering out in there. So the longevity of this is going to be quite a bit more than just that bare hole in there where you create that heat and burn away the wood. You're not gonna burn away that aluminum very easily, especially with just the friction of a bow drill fire. So it's a really good little tip or trick that only takes an extra five minutes in the processing or creation of your set, but it can save you a lot of headache. A lot of the problems in a bow drill set come from the bearing block. When you start to get to the point where the bow becomes hard to push back and forth, Generally, it's because you're shouldering out or binding in the top block. It's not because of the bottom block or the bottom hole in the hearth board, unless you're so deep that you're starting to shoulder out here moving side to side. But remember with a bow drill fire, that form is 90% of the key. If you have good form, you can make marginal materials work. 
maybe a little bit damp, maybe a little bit hard, things like that. But if your form isn't good, you're never gonna make anything but absolutely perfect materials work. This trick right here will help you to make or help you to maximize any material that you use and give you a better free flow of your spindle on the hearth board so that all the friction is created in the hearth board and no friction in the top block. And that's part of the key element or key understanding to making a bow drill fire. Now obviously there are a lot of things that you could do or carry with you to imitate this. You could use a piece of penny in there or a dime or something like that that you could smash into the hole. You could use some type of a thumbtack with the head up and the thumbtack down. You could put a bearing race in there. All of those things will work. The problem is you're carrying something else. And that's the whole point of this video is, what can I do off the landscape to make this better? What improvements can I make that are available to me without carrying something else into the woods? And pop cans and metal trash are very prevalent, unfortunately, all over the United States now. So your chance of finding a metal can of some sort are pretty good. It wouldn't have to be a pop can. It could be a soup can. It could be the top of a mason jar. Anything that was made out of a thin sheet metal will work for this concept very well. But I wanted to get this video out to you because I've never seen anyone do this particular thing before. That doesn't mean it's new. Somebody's probably thought of it somewhere along the line. Maybe they just didn't make a video on it, on it or put it in a book. But I thought it was a neat idea. I experimented with it this weekend during the basic class. I actually thought of it on the plane back from Holland. And if anybody's asking why my face is shaven now, it's not because I don't want to have a beard anymore. It's not because it's summertime. It's because I shot a commercial in Holland last week that I can't discuss right now until the commercial comes out, but it was for light reactive type lenses that turn light and dark in the, in the sunlight. And part of that commercial forced me to shave my face. You'll understand more when I post the commercial to YouTube once it's released in a couple of weeks. You know, I've been working with audible.com at www.audible.com forward slash wilderness to try to give you guys some places you could go to find some audio books in case you don't have time to sit and read. And I find it very convenient for me, like when I was on a plane for eight hours traveling back and forth from Holland to get these type of books download them and listen to them at my leisure. And there's a really good book called The Untold History of the U.S. by Oliver Stone and Peter Kuznick. It's about 30 hours plus. I didn't even get it done on both plane trips and airport layovers. It's a very, very good book. I suggest you check that out as well. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family. I appreciate everything that you do for our business, for our instructors, all of our sponsors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.